Hey, this is Bruce coming at you with Groxio Learning, and I thought we'd put together for the final episode of the Elixir chapter something that puts together several of the concepts that we've used already. One of them is the idea that we'd like to be able to make a clean API. Another one is the idea that we can use protocols to, um, to kind of clean up the way that we're doing several of the things in, in Elixir, especially IEX inspection. And the third thing is that we can use sigils for things like representation of data quickly. And the fourth thing is that we can use macros to kind of make it simpler to use our APIs. So let's go ahead and get going with that. So probably the best thing that we could do is build something really simple, like a point with an X and a Y. So I'm going to say mix new point. And I'm going to change to that directory like that and start it up. And so I'm going to go ahead and, and clean this up. And I'm going to do uh, define a structure. I'm going to clean up the test as well, um, just so it's not lying at me, not lying to me. It's true. And then I'll let you touch up the test after the fact. And so I'm going to take this, this point and I'm going to define a structure. And I'd like this to be well defined like a struct, but I'd also like a little bit of syntactic sugar that we'll do through sigils. And, um, and I'd, I'd like for this to have some nice behavior that we'll do through IEX, um, or I'm sorry, that we'll do through the inspect protocol. But let's start this by having good defaults for our data. So we'll default our point to the origin like that. And let's also define a new with an X and a Y so that if you're doing your own construction and you're not picking up the defaults, if you're constructing through here, let's make sure that, that X and Y are valid integers for our space. So let's say when X is, is um, when is int X and is int Y. And so we're going to say struct X is X and Y is Y like that. And so I'd like to create a new function because I really don't like the module name with underscore underscore struct for creating them. And I think that these can work with pipes where it's often tedious to use the alternative syntax like, like this. So um, let's go ahead and start with that one. I think that that's probably a pretty good one. Um, that's probably a good good starting place for that. And so let's say I'm going to start this on IEX. Okay, so we have um, we have an error, so I can't invoke the local is int. Oh. Oh, it is integer. That's the problem. So um, I'm pretty sure that I can wrap that in the guard. Like that. So let's go ahead and... So let's run IEXS mix to start mix. And so now we can say point dot new. And let's say I try to start that with atoms. That's going to break because um, my 
my new guard, this is my constructor, won't work. So the nice thing about this API is that if you're coming in through our destructors or you're coming in by choosing our default values, you're going to, you're going to get a valid point and you're going to stay valid. So I like that idea quite a lot, actually. And I think I'd also like to be able to have a shorthand way of representing our points and a shorthand way of, of creating points. So maybe a good, um, a good way to create a point would be like a point with x, y like that, or even x base y like that. That looks pretty airy and clean um, like this. Yeah, I think I like that. So let's build a sigil that'll do that. And so all the sigil is, is a bit of sugar. So this is an array of words and we could choose whatever, you know, we could choose from eight different delimiters here. Um, and basically this has the function that this sigil invokes is actually going to have two arguments. One is the string here, and one is the modifiers here, the kind of options. So if I look at if I look at IEX, there should be a sigil W. So I could say give me help on that. And sure enough, there is. And so the job of the if I want to enable a sigil for my point, the job is to make sure that there's no no overlapping ones. So H and sure enough, there's not. That's good. And um, then I need to I need to do a couple of things. First, I need to make sure that sigil p is available at the top level, and I can do that with a using macro that we'll get to in in a little bit. And the second thing that I need to do is is implement the sigil, um, which is sigil p, which will have two arguments. One is a term, and we'll take a string, and one is a set of modifiers. So let's do that now. Sigil P, and we're going to um, take a string. And then I'm also going to take a, um, uh, what else do I need? I need, uh, I need the options. And let's just say the options are going to be an empty list here. And you know we could play with that later on, but I think that's going to do um, well enough for this example. And then I want a, a private function. So the splitter, and this is actually going to create the regular expression, ironically, with another sigil that is going to have a. Um, well, let's play with it and see. So let's say our splitter function is equal to, and that's going to be a regular expression. And in in Elixir, it's kind of, um, it's idiomatic to wrap your regular expressions in slashes, but you don't have to. For example, if we were matching something with slashes in it, then I'd, I'd choose a different delimiter. So let's say that we want to start with, a, um, with zero or more white spaces followed by a comma. And then maybe it's zero or more commas. Yeah, no, I think I think we we're gonna start this with a comma in there, and then zero zero or more spaces like that. Um, that's probably pretty good. And then let's see, that's a string dot split. So one comma space two. And I'm going to class a splitter like that. And then I get a list just like that, which is nice. And um, then I can take. Um, so the nice thing about this is now I can map over those things and pass it. Pass it string integer one. And this is going to fail hard if I give it something that's not a valid 
integer. All right, so this thing isn't a valid integer, which I like because this is actually a um, this is actually not a bad error message. Um, it's telling me that um, that I wasn't able to create the um, an integer, and it's failing hard. So this won't this constructor won't let me create bad data. So this is going to take a string, and, and it's going to take options. Um, oh, I'm sorry. This is the so the splitter is this, and uh, what did we say? It was going to look like that. So that looks great. So I'm going to actually say so string. I'm going to take the string and I'm going to pipe that to string dot split, and I'm going to pass it the. I can pass it the splitter. Can oh, you know what I can do? I can um, make this a single argument. No, I'm wrong. So I'm going to pass it, uh, I'm going to split the string on the splitter. And the splitter actually just returns this regular expression. So that's just fine. So I'm going to split it using the splitter. And then I'm going to, um, I'm going to map over that. So this is digits. You know what? And I could even do this x y. Then I can map over that. And we're going to convert each one of those to an integer. Okay, and then I can say new x, y. So the nice thing about this code structure is that this will fail hard. It'll fail in two places. So if I don't provide enough integers or if I provide too many integers, that'll fail. Or if any one of them is not a valid integer format, that'll fail also. And um, then I just call my constructor right here, which has extra little bit of protection with the guards in there. So I have so basically since since this is um, this is my boundary layer, this is my API layer for my module, um, I know that the data coming in, into this is going to be clean. So that's a nice that's probably a nice place to leave things. So um, let's recompile and let's import Oh, there's the splitter. You know, so I need that as a function. So I'm, I need to import um, the point. And I only want to import the um, the sigil. So this is so sigil p, and this is the one with two. The version with two arguments. So I think that's right. So let's try p with um, one two. Ah, that's really cool, right? So I get the um, the point of one and two. So I think that this is a good place to stop and take stock. So what we've done so far is we have a API. We have a clean way to create data. We also have a shorthand way of creating data um, if, if I'm going to create a lot of it. And um, this is a great um, you know, DSLE way of, of creating um, a lot of data at once. Um, and, and it's actually open to any Elixir program. But there are still a couple of things to clean up. The first thing is that I'd like this data to be to stay structured so that there's all there's still an X and a Y, but I'd like the presentation of it to be a little bit prettier. So something like this. So that's probably a better representation for what we're looking for. And we can get there with the inspect protocol and we'll do that in a second. So the other thing that we have to do 
is this import is kind of nasty. So it would be nice to allow our users a cleaner way to do that. And we're actually going to um, write the using macro uh, to kind of basically add a dsl -y flavor to what we're doing. So that's what we'll do next. One of my favorite things about Elixir is that it allows you to use macros, which is basically code that writes code, but it doesn't overly use them. And so we're just going to add a little bit of a macro just to do some friendly imports, just so that the users that are consuming our product are able to use this sigil without doing this, this relatively ugly import. So let's do that now. So we're going to um, just take a look at some documentation in, um, in the Elixir tool. This, this documentation is actually um, as good as any language out there. And we're going to look for the underscore underscore using macro. And there it is right there. So, and so in this case, what we're doing is actually building a macro. And a macro is actually code that writes code. And so what happens is that in this macro, I'm actually converting this little bit of code, the import test case. And in our case, we're going to import point um, into um, the, the, the functions that use point points into whatever's consuming this. And it'll actually run this import for us. But what this is actually doing is building a syntax tree. So you can actually see the syntax tree for any little bit of Elixir syntax. So for example, the syntax tree, and you do that with a quote do and end. So the syntax tree for something like the number of four is easy. It's just that thing. But if I get a little bit more complicated, then this is gonna get a little bit more complicated too. So what's happening is that now the syntax tree has a bunch of three tuples, or really one. So the first is the function that it's running, and the third is the arguments, and the second piece is, the, is basically some context related to, um, related to what I'm running. So basically this is telling me that in IEX, we've already imported the kernel. So I bet that if I look at kernel, I could find the plus function like that. And there it is. So basically, this quoted code is what Elixir is running under the covers. Function, metadata, and arguments. And so what we're going to do is run a tiny little macro that lives at the top of our file that allows somebody to type, for example, use point, and it will do all the things that we want our users to do to consume point. Now, the users that are consuming point shouldn't know have to know that you have to import this sigil to do the, the hard part of the work, right? This, this import statement right here. We should be able to do this this um, this statement as part of our own using statement. So let's do that now. So I'm going to drop the code in right here, and then we're going to wrap the using around here. And, and using again, it allows me. So we've seen a couple of times like the Phoenix framework has things like use. Uh, or the Ecto framework has um, use Ecto query or things like that. It basically sets up, it runs all the macros in this file that need to be run uh, for us to consume an API. Said another way, we're announcing our intention to consume an API. So let's set that up. This is what the code is going to look like. And we'll drop it into our code just like this. But rather than importing test case, which is actually what the using macro does in our test case. So if we go over to here, if we go over to this point test, this uses the text test case. 
And, um, and this code is actually what we're actually doing in that use test case. It's importing the test case. Um, it's importing the test, test case, all the functions and macros in the test case module. So now I ought to be able to recompile this. I ought to be able to recompile point. Um, oh, did I not save it? I didn't save it. Okay, let's actually start this from scratch. Um, IX. Just so you can see that I haven't done anything. And so now I want to use point. Now, what's interesting is I already have access to my, um, my so I can give, get help on Sigil P. So it exists, but we haven't written any documentation for it. So I have access to this, and so I can use that sigil. So I could say P, give me a point one, two, like that. And this actually does the more sophisticated work of creating the point underneath, which is nice. So now the consumers of my API, all they need to do is this. So there's one last little piece of work that I'd like to do, and that's clean up the IEX representation. So the nice thing is that even though I have a point that, um, that structurally is a struct underneath, and in fact, I can see that like this, you see that the data type is a point. This is a struct. And, um, and it says exactly what a struct is. And it says the modules that have the functions. But what we like is the representation um, when we inspect this thing to be a little bit different. So if I say a point is equal to, so point um, zero, zero, like that. So if I say inspect, what I'm actually getting is the underlying representation or the underlying implementation of struct. And I'd like something that's custom. So we're going to take that on next. So we're back and we're implementing our, our point. And we're taking a look at, so there's a, there's a sigil that we have that's for creating new points. And let's say that we want to create a point 10, 10, and one of the things that we like is that this is a really pretty way for creating syntax that has the connotation of a point. It actually sends me through the point constructors. It's really thin for, for a DSL. But one of the things that we don't like is that whenever this is inspected in the context of any of Elixir's tooling, and that's whenever I use an inspect, I actually get the underlying representation for a struct. And so that's disappointing. But there's a protocol that will allow me to override that behavior. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to get help for inspect. Okay, so you can see that inspect is a protocol and a protocol is basically a contract. And this basically says, if I implement a series, you know, one or more functions, then I can expect to get, get behaviors for free from certain aspects of the Elixir language, like the IEX console. So what we're going to do is actually implement the inspect function, which is going to give us a thing. So for us, this will be a point and the options, and we'll probably ignore the options and we need to build something that looks like this and concat is actually part of an algebra that's used to build documentation for complicated forms so you can imagine that our our point might participate in longer lists and we want it to be a good citizen within that so what we're going to do is import the inspect algebra and then just use concatenate exactly like this um, to actually build our implementation. So let's grab this implementation and we'll tack it right on to the end of our point. So 
the way to read this is that we're implementing the inspect protocol and this is something that is known. This isn't something that we named. It's something that Elixir has provided for us. But we want to implement this for a point. And we're going to do, we're going to implement or to import the inspect algebra. And then we're going to concatenate. Let's say that we just want an open brace there and a closed brace there. And we want nothing more than to do um, a p dot x or this is a point and a point dot y and these probably have to be strings so so to string point x and to string point y. And let's see if that's going to behave better for us. So let's recompile. Okay, ops is unused and we kind of knew that was true, but we didn't ignore it. So let's tidy that up now. Clean up all those warnings. It's a good habit to get into. And so let's create a point of 42 and 42 so the double meaning of the universe and we come up we come out with this which is exactly what we asked it to do but let's <laughs> but we didn't have enough we need some kind of a delimiter in there so let's say we're going to concat that 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 so there's our delimiter Now, we can recompile and then the double meaning of the universe and there we are. So now we could do a point dot new and oh, so did we ever default those arguments? We didn't. So let's build a def new do and then I'm going to just say struct like that like that so now if I do a point dot new anytime that that elixir calls inspect I'm going to get a beautiful representation of a point and the nice thing is that I might be able to um, to have a bunch of points in a row so for example um, I'll say points is equal to uh, four X is taken from, uh, let's say, 1 to 3, four, uh, and Y is taken from 4 to 6, and I'm going to say point dot new X, Y, right? So this is a four comprehension. And it's going to build all the possible combinations of x from 1 to 3 and y from 4 to 6. Uh, what did I do wrong? So, Oh, there's no comma there. I need a comma there. All right. So now you can see that the inspect protocol treats us just fine. Since we've actually used the algebra, we could actually participate in, um, in other data structures as well. And everything continues to work fine which is lovely. That's exactly what we want. So what we've done is we've built an Elixir API and we've used three techniques. One, we've tightened up the representation that we want by changing what's in inspect. Two, we've actually included a sigil for quick representation of our data. And it's not something that you want to use all the time, but for something like a point or something where you have a very common um, data representation. It's a great way to get a shorthand to create a uh, shorthand way to create it. The third thing that we did is we used macros, but we just used used them with a, the slightest feather touch, so that we actually did this import rather than so our users can say use point rather than saying import point only sigil um, sigil p 
colon two, which is a much friendlier experience. So I hope you've enjoyed these, these videos and I hope you've enjoyed the Elixir lessons. This is Bruce from Vroxio signing off. Peace.